Welcome to Star Talk with your hosts, Colin and Marty. Hey, welcome to Star Talk Live. Colin here with you. And, and Marty here with you. Oh, Marty, no, you shaved I'm, your beard off. Yeah, I <laughs> seem so much younger. It's uh it's a different Star Talk Live tonight. Marty is actually at the premiere of his new film or his new series, which is called Pets and Pickers. And uh, we're going to play a little clip for that in a moment. But I uh, just want to shout out people that just had uh, uh, Mother's Day. And we just want to wish all the, the, uh, the mothers a happy Mother's Day, even though it is a couple days later. And it was a really wonderful weekend. I hope everybody had a good time. How are you feeling these days, Garnet? I'm feeling awesome. You got a different background. It's like you got a a whiteboard light pack yeah, on the back. I'm I'm in the the VFX studio tonight. VFX and, sounds professional. Yeah, yeah. Here at uh, Delta Film Academy, and uh, I sort of split my time up between the production kids and then uh, the VFX kids. And uh, right now it's. Uh, filming time for all of our kids and uh, I've been posting today was like day seven of a 10 day shoot for three teams so uh, it's been very fun we had we had uh, the, the students we've got about 25 kids in visual effects 25 in film production and 25 in the acting academy and towards, as we get closer to the end of uh, school, uh, they all collaborate together to make three amazing, powerful films. So, wow. yeah. So have you seen any good films lately? Uh, you know, um, I haven't been to the movie theater uh, since, I can't even remember, but I've been watching um, lots of, lots of uh, great, um, TV series. Anyway, I just finished watching Ozark. Oh, um, yeah. So when that came out, but they recently released season two of that. So, um, I think it's season three or four. Oh, is it? Oh yeah. yeah maybe that could be right. But because, um, uh, I watched the, f the first two. Yeah. Um, so I guess there's some new ones out, so I oh, probably yeah. have to get caught up on that. Those are all so binge watchable. Like you start, you know. We just finished binge watching Bosch. That's uh, one of my favorites. That's on Amazon Prime, I think. But uh, Bosch is a detective, Bosch. and I've he's um, gotta look this up. Kind of a ratty detective who kind of always had trouble with authority when he used to be a police officer, and now he's a private detective. And the books are written by Michael Connolly, and they're awesome. And uh, that's my fa favorite by the pool reading when I'm uh, on holidays. Wait, so. is this is this the right one? Um, Bosch. Yep, Bosch. Yep, that's it. Okay. Oh, this was in twenty. This is from a while back, eh? Yeah. Well, they got to they just did some new ones. It's called Bosch Legacy. So. Oh, okay. They've Off they've the... come back. I'll have to check that out. Yeah, one one I've been watching is this one, uh, Outer Range, with uh, Josh Brolin. Oh, yeah. I think my wife was watching that for a yeah, bit. Yeah, this has been really, really cool. Just hmm. like if you're into the Twilight Zone or anything like that, it's kind of, you know, a country. A sci-fi Yellowstone? Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> Uh, oh, it's, it's, uh, yeah, pretty cool. Um, yeah. So, you know, Hey, in spite of, I guess we had our COVID theater shut down for a while, but the film industry continues to, uh, kind of push, push on and forward. Um, you know, we, like, man, like we've got it pretty good. Like, um, if you want content of any kind, pretty much between, you know, Netflix, Prime, Disney Plus, you know, you've got a ton of pretty awesome 
stuff to entertain yourself with. Wow. Well, we got some folks in the room. Uh, welcome, Jeremy. Uh, nice to see you, Will. Tim, always good to have you. The judge is in the room. Tim uh, Judge. George, Arizona represented. Good to see you guys. We were missing you last week. And uh, so it's, it's good to see a few people join in the chat. Um, we are on Twitter spaces at the same time, so we're trying to go back and forth between our space and our stream. And uh, uh, kind of wanted to wait just a little bit to get a few more people in, then we'll show you a quick clip of where Marty is tonight. Oh, yeah. Um, but I just got a new laptop because oh, my, yeah. my other one was swollen. The battery was uh, uh, dying, and it was a fire hazard. And it was supposed to be recalled by Apple, but I think my serial number was out by like one digit or something. And they said no. So I had to just bite the bullet and, and get a new one. But in the uh, process of migrating from my old laptop to my new one, I had to go through and start deleting a whole bunch of stuff. And I found some pictures I haven't seen for a long time. So I'm going to show a couple of those just for fun. Um, if I can share my screen. How do I do that on here? Share a screen. You know, I've been wanting one of those new Apple MacBooks because I kind of gave up on Apple. I used to be an Apple evangelist and I loved it. You know, that's what you made your music. You did your movies on it. And then gradually, the more Apple started to, they, they started taking all the pro features off of their computers, you know, all the ports that we needed. Yeah. And, and, and then, you know, PCs became more powerful and it's just like, nah, we don't need that. Hey, what happened? Colin uh, crashed. He'll be back. He'll be back. Anyway, as I was saying, all the ports, you know, uh, came off the computers and uh, Macs were just really expensive and kind of underpowered. And, uh, you know, I sort of switched to to PC at that time. And but now, you know, maybe I'll bring up this uh, uh, this uh, Apple MacBook screen here while Colin gets back up. It's like Apple dot com. Apple came out with the the uh, M1. Uh, the uh, the new M1 chip, or is it Mac Mac? Yes, there we go. MacBook Pro, yeah. You know they came up with this new this new chip, and it's insane. Like it's more. They're just blowing away the the highest power PCs out there, and uh, yeah, my back. You're back. So, so I've been, yeah, I'm kind of really jealous of you getting one of these laptops because they can freaking well, pretty can, much, I, you know, that's all you need in your life is this MacBook Pro, you know, and, you know, it's, um, you've got it made, you know, you'll become more popular, you know, um, normally I can't sing very well. If I had one of these, I could probably be a good <laughs> musician, you know, you, you know, it's just better, you know, life in general well i can tell you one thing after doing the migration over the weekend um there's some of my apps that don't work um first of all my 2015 apple was too old for some things to work and now my new machine is too new for some of my legacy things to work so you got to be really careful as to what's been upgraded and what hasn't so the old saying don't fix what ain't broke kind of stands but anyway, yep. third world problems. Let me see if I can share my screen now. This will be kind of fun. Well, for the people in spaces, we'll describe to you what's oh, being on the screen. Right. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Oh, Tim says he's watching Outer Range, too. Oh, yeah, cool. That's a pretty good show. Good old Josh Brolin, Thanos. Oh. There's your screen. All right. So this is, uh, I wonder how you zoom on this thing. Oh, there. 
Ooh, I like that uh, camera on the uh, on the, the crane head. Yeah, so this is in Manchester, Tennessee. This is a giant outdoor f- festival. And if you can see me there sitting at the piano and um, up on the big screen. What was interesting about this particular show and the reason I wanted to show it is is uh, normally when we do a big concert, we get paid before we go on stage. And we rolled up in the tour bus on this particular show, and we hadn't been paid yet. And so the promoter got onto the tour bus and said, oh, well, it's earlier in the day. Um, we got more people coming, you know, do your show, and then we'll get you paid. And Marty was on the tour bus, and he said, no. <laughs> He said, no, 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 we're not getting on that stage until you pay us in full. And the promoter said, well, I don't, I don't, I don't have the money right now. And he says, well, you're going to find the money. He said, what about all these uh, booths and stands and hot dog stands and all these places? Go get the money from these people. And the promoter said, well, I can't do that. And he said, you can. So Marty got pillowcases from the bunks of the tour bus. <laughs> And he got in a golf cart with the promoter and they rode around this entire complex with the pillowcases, filling it up with cash. (laughs) Nice. (laughs) And sure enough, they got all the cash. And uh, from the ticket box, from the different vendors, uh, wherever they could find it. And then we ended up coming on stage and and actually playing. So this that that was in Manchester, Tennessee, and that was a great story. And maybe uh, Marty and I will talk about it later. Um, here's another interesting picture here. Uh, this was at the Speedway in Bristol, Tennessee. And this is with Chuck Negron, the lead singer from Three Dog Night. Okay. And uh, that's me, clean shaven, with Donnie McDougal from the Guess Who?, and our drummer, Roger Belanger, who's no longer with us. But uh, Chuck Negron was that wonderful voice of Three Dog Night that you remember. One is the loneliest number. Anyway, so uh, that was an interesting afternoon because Donnie and um, Chuck had been on the Festival Express, the train that went across the country with Janis Joplin and all these different bands. And and this particular moment, we were talking about when Donnie and Chuck were sitting together in one of the cars, and Marty was on that Festival Express, and he was taking video, and he has some video of the bands jamming on that train. So we'll have to get him to dig that out, but uh, I was hoping he'd be here to show him this picture because he'd get a good kick out of it. So um, what else? This is uh, one I found in my switching over of me as a little kid with Burton Cummings. And nice. who's, who's showing who how to play piano? <laughs> Burton. Yeah. He looks so young there. Right? I heard he was, he's uh, playing somewhere. Archer was saying he's going down to Grand Forks or something like that. Yeah, he's he's. I think he's scheduled to do that. It used to be called Canifest, Canifest, and now I think it's Rock Fest of some kind. But I remember this particular moment. He was showing me how to play um, Your Backyard from his album and the chord voicings for playing where I was playing the solo, which was really interesting. And uh, this one, Marty would love, is me with Credence Clearwater. Oh, dude. And uh, That's awesome. And um, so I fit right in. <laughs> I'm probably dressed a little better than those guys, but hey. Where 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 was that at? This was at the uh, Northview Golf and Country Club. They were playing, and I was the warm-up act, so I did a solo um, performance. And then they went on, and it was for the Canadian Cancer Society. Oh, nice. And, of course, they played all their legendary hits. Oh, Yeah. And yeah. this this fellow here is actually Elliot Easton, and he was the guitar player for the Cars. Oh wow! Yeah, so um, another my best friend's girlfriend. Exactly, and uh, left-handed upside down guitar he plays, which is uh, pretty rare. So that's uh, a little. Oh, and one last one here was uh, Safeco Field. 
This was when they first opened Safeco Field in Seattle, where the actual roof opened up. And uh, it's where the Seattle Mariners play. But uh, I found this while I was deleting photos, which was kind of fun. And this old blast from the past, me with uh, oh, Steve. Oh, man. What? Steve Tyler. And Tony no. Lee. Yeah. Look at his face. He is like, he looks like he's 17 years old. Wow. And uh, there's me with my pink shirt on. And, and uh, that was at uh, Club Soda in Vancouver. And my band was the band playing there. And then we had a big jam that very night. And these guys all got on stage. And uh, there was there was some other people there, too. One of the uh, guys from uh, Loverboy got up and joined on stage. And from Iron Maiden, the drummer from Iron Maiden oh, jumped wow. up and played. And so, uh, yeah, it was a fun night. So, so at what point in Aerosmith's uh, history was that? Like, what? Uh, this was when they were at Little Mountain Sound, and they were yeah. recording. Uh, uh, pr I think it was Permanent Vacations. Yeah. Um, or Pump, one of those. They did two or three records at Little Mountain, and I spent quite a bit of time there with those guys because I lived a couple blocks away, and Aerosmith used to come and suntan on my roof because I lived right above. Uh, at Camby and Broadway, there's a Starbucks there, and it used to be a rooftop apartment next door. It's gone now. They turned it into a hamburger place or something. But uh, they used to come over and hang out, and um, they um, they weren't the only band. We had quite a few people come to that place because it was a beautiful big upper deck on top of a building overlooking Falls Creek, and uh, we used to have... Um, barbecues and all kinds of stuff so a lot of fun a lot of history and i thought marty would have liked to seen a couple of those shots the more i go through my uh um archives and find stuff i'll i'll start putting a few things together and and uh yeah you'll, you'll have to share these on your twitter account so anyone in the spaces tonight can have a look at these photos that we've seen. All right, I forget the the spaces. Um, this is an interesting shot and very little Photoshop, even though it looks like it's been Photoshopped a little bit. I think I enhanced it just a bit, but it was really this red and you can't really see, but I'm looking over, and this is in St. John's, Newfoundland. There is an iceberg out there in the ocean and it was unbelievable to be at an outdoor summer festival and look out in the ocean and see a giant iceberg. But uh, anyway. What, what was that keyboard you're playing there? Uh, this this is my Yamaha, and it's actually not red. It's black, but. Okay. Yeah, because uh, there's those red keyboards. What are those ones? Those called? are Nords. Oh, this, yeah. This wasn't a Nord. This, wow, that's I'm the I'm pretty sure this was a Yamaha. And, uh, yeah, so a lot of fun. Anyway, uh, we'll move on and stop share. And we'll get back to the chat and Crypto Espanol. Welcome. And who else is in here? All right. We got the whale. Jason, welcome. What's up? All the regular vandals. Yeah. So let's, uh, so for those of you that have joined and wondering where Martino is tonight, he is at a uh, movie premiere or a TV show premiere. Well, I don't know what you call it, of his show that's called Pets and Pickers, or the show that he is he is uh, part of, and and uh, so they're doing the the premiere of that tonight, and I think it's on CTV Television starting on the twelfth. Uh, I think that's what it says. Uh, do you want to show that uh, clip? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you guys thought he's, Marty was, you thought he was just like a rock and roll guy, you know, who he's a TV you know, star now. Yeah, yeah. You know, he goes from driving around with golf carts, you know, getting people to put money in the bag to get you paid. You know, I think maybe Marty was the original, you know, when money moves, you get paid. <laughs> No, you it's get like, paid, then money. <laughs> yeah. When Marty moves in a golf cart, That's you, right. get you get paid. You get paid. Yeah. All right. Here we go. Marty's show. Let me get this full screen. Hopefully, 
hopefully you guys can hear this. Uh, not sure if. No, no audio. Oh, you guys don't have that? No. Nope. Okay, let me re let me just reshare that. Because we gotta hear the audio. We definitely do. Okay, can I remove that? Add to stream. No. Uh, I think there's a little click button that says share audio. Stop screen. Add stream. Whoops. No. <laughs> Uh, share screen, click audio, definitely. Okay, there is audio here, it should work. Rochester, New York is in the house. Here we go. No patient should be declined treatment because of funding. We have to help you. Let's open this up. There he is. <laughs> Make some money. We can cover all of the costs. We're here for animals. It gives people hope. He's my pet. We're going to save some lives. Pets and Pickers, new series, Thursday at 9 Eastern on Discovery. Yeah. Yeah. And so it's the uh, premiere tonight at the theater downtown, and Marty's there. So he will be back on Star Talk Live uh, next week. So, um, yeah. So I'm going to turn this over to Garnet. We're going to get some updates on the mofo goats and no. some whatever else is going on. Yeah, let's see what uh well, you know, we're 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 obviously a community of entertainment and uh you know, here we are with you know, Marty was our resident ex rock and roll expert and now he's like, you know, first one distributed on Canadian television, all these projects that we have coming up. Um, of course, another uh, film that uh, the Mofo Goats have been partnered with uh, has been uh, still working nine to five. And they were recently at uh, the Toronto Film Festival. Uh, let me just type this in. Hot Docs is a pretty famous one. Yeah, it's they they were telling me that it's one of the premier, uh, you know, documentary festivals um, for anyone doing uh, documentaries. This is the place where you want to be. And this Saturday they just had their show. And of course, for those of you who don't know, um, you know, really the the topic uh, there. Uh, covering was one of uh, uh, women, uh, women in the workplace, right? And the whole thing. So um, uh, starring Dolly Parton, Lily Tomlin, and Jane Fonda. And um, all three of those women have been major, major advocates for uh, women's rights and just, you know, equality in the workplace is the topic of this particular film. And it's been getting just amazing reviews on RottenTomatoes.com. Um, everyone's sort of raving about it. And so we're, you know, happy to partner with these guys as with our expertise in the area of NFTs. And we're going to help them basically take their story um, that they tell in their film. And they're really, you know, wanting to use that story to help kind of forward the movement, right, that has begun uh, to empower women as they're uh, kind of moving moving forward, working out uh, these problems. So um, we have a special viewing uh, for sort of, I guess what we say, the NFT community that we want to introduce um, to these ladies and to the filmmakers. Um, and that's going to be May the 16th. Um, on a platform called Beam, and Beam is spelled B E E M. Yeah, and uh, we'll we'll post the link kind of for everyone. The closer we get, and really, what they're you know we're going to be showing this film, and what 
what we're really doing is um, connecting the filmmaking team with NFT women's groups and founders. And, you know, it's really the beginning of a conversation of how the film can help empower them. And uh, the film is going to be uh, launching their own token in a very special way. But this particular platform is really cool because while you watch the movie together, you can sort of chat in the same way uh, we have our own chat in the window here. And it has a feature called token gating, meaning um, it's sort of a VIP showing for specific NFT groups. So if you own that NFT or if it's in your wallet, you get access to this particular film and you're going to get access to um, talk to the filmmakers and uh, sort of meet them in person. So um, it's all part of, you know, our NFT uh, strategy moving forward, um, helping projects like this one. There's more movies coming uh, this summer that we're going to be working with. And of course, we're looking forward to NFT Connect in Austin. Uh, there's going to be uh, all kinds of fun happening down there. Um, and man, I wish, I, I think next week we're going to try and get Archer, um, kind of on a, a little interview. He's been so busy. Paul Archer is our, um, artist for, uh, the MoFo goats. And, um, yeah, he's just, he's, I don't know, he's down near Grand Fork somewhere. He was up on rooftops or scaffolding. Um, yeah, we tried to get him last week, too, and he was in the middle of a job. So I think I showed the picture of Willie Nelson that he was doing. Yeah. So he's uh, nonstop, but we'll definitely get him uh, as soon as possible. And um, that's uh, Tim says, love it. Good luck, Marty, on your show. That's great. Thanks, Tim. We uh, will hear all about it, I'm sure, next week. I just posted a picture of Marty and I in the Twitter, just trying to figure out how to go between StreamYard and Twitter. So much technology here, guys. How fun is that? Time for Web 4. <laughs> oh, yeah. And we we're, well, we were talking about, you know, last on Monday, we were cruising around the metaverse looking for cool places to hang out. There was Dora and Phil and myself. And I think Crypto Construction ended up in there too. We were just, um, looking for places, things we can, you know, uh, activities we can do together as a community. And we, we were looking for other places in uh, these uh, virtual worlds where we can watch movies together. And we, we did find a couple really cool theaters where you're there with your avatar. Of course, if you have a headset, it's super cool because some of the movies are in 3D. So they're way more, it's... Uh, Philip was saying it was like, uh, you know, he could, he was watching 300, I think, and all the spears and knives were coming right out of the walls. So anyway, good fun. And of course we're doing research as well for, you know, for the musicians that are coming into our community. Um, we want to make available just, you know, ways to reach out to audiences when they either can't be there live with you or where we want to go to places where people are congregated online. There's been a couple um, cool concerts in one metaverse called uh, Roblox, which my kids are really into. 65 million users on that platform. Wow. And they've had a couple of concerts in there that were attended by game players in their avatars in the millions. And so, uh, you know, th these... Uh, sort of virtual concerts are going to be just another way to enjoy the music we all know and love, as well as live events. Once again, you know, this summer is going to be, should be fun. Um, yeah. We are goats. We are goats. We want to be where this stuff is. I see Mr. Swee is there in the, in the room. And uh, Dora was telling me that you had a, uh, you know, Mr. Swee is a DJ who sort of found a, 
an interest and you know a sort of a a place doing live uh, shows in metaverses and selling NFTs to support himself while he does that. And I, and I think he uh, just had a successful, uh, successful time at that. Maybe we could get him up to share. I don't know if you're a, on a mic or anything, Mr. Sui, find your way up to grab a mic. I wouldn't mind hearing how your NFT sale went. You know, part of, you know, innovating in this space of, you know, with music, NFTs, um, almost everyone in this space agrees that it is quite early days. And, you know, the process of, you know, figuring out, it's like, oh, what's the, what's the best way? How does music really connect with this technology? And, uh, you know, I know the guys at Session Wire are talking about NFTs and uh, how they relate to the creative process because most of the people on that platform are not necessarily touring with the music yet, but they're creating. Um, well, we're also talking about NFTs. Each stem that you make on a track can be its own NFT so that if people want to remix an album, they can take those stems and each one of them will be uh, unique in its own way, but people can do different variations and mixes of somebody's record. So it's a lot of cool things happening. And uh, it's uh, it's a, it's a, like you say, Garnet, we are in the early days and there's a lot more uh, opportunities to come. And as more and more things standardize and more and more people use, uh, NFTs and get used to the the idea of how to redistribute music and create a new economy for musicians. I think that's one of the big goals for all of us is to increase the economy for the creators. And it's uh, we know the record companies are making billions of dollars, but we want to see that the independent artists and even those that have deals. Uh, they get a better fair shake, and, and that's what we've been about right since the beginning. So thanks yeah. for uh, sharing that. And we'll be switching over to spaces here pretty soon so people can get a chance to talk. Um, I can't hear them from here. so Okay. You want to switch to your headphones, to your phone? We may just um, – do you want to end the stream and go to spaces, or do you want to stay? Well, we, we can um, – break. Well, if we switch to the spaces, we'll just uh, uh, leave the audio up for anyone who's in the room here and wants to listen to the continued conversation or whatever feedback those guys have on that side. We can get Dora up. I'll just turn on the, uh, the uh, audio from the spaces here. should be there. And I'll switch over. My headphones to my phone audio. So will we be able to hear them coming through here? Oh, I got you now. I, I just need your audio going through the space, and I think it should be. All right, can you guys hear Dora out there, Tim? I can't. Hmm. Yeah, it's funny. Number oh. one rule of a show, no dead air. So uh, <laughs> it's been uh, been a lot of fun this uh, this past week. And you you mentioned about Session Wire and some of the things that we're doing in regards to Connecting with uh, Starwire, we've been in discussions with uh, a few different groups. One is a really large group of uh, mix engineers for rap and hip hop, and uh, we we're we're going to be doing a, a joint venture with these guys, which a press release will come out in the next, I would say, within a month, and that's opening our doors to a lot of very serious uh, people with. Um, Real great music. So, more on that to come. 
What if you Unmute. just what well, if you just take your phone on speaker and put it close to the microphone? Should be streaming oh, right that's too much latency. Tim, anything on your side? Nope, he says. Oh. Oh well. Well, I think we can uh, shut shut the uh, shut the uh, space down or the uh, stream down. The tube down, stream down, and we'll continue on spaces here. So does uh, are you going to post a link in the chat for? Yeah, actually, if anyone's on Twitter, um, Mofo Goats, just uh, search up Mofo Goats and you'll find us. Uh, let me see if I can put it in here. At Mofo Goats. There you go. At so Mofo for, Goats, yeah. yeah. So at join, Mofo Goats. Join us on Spaces, and uh, Marty will be back next week. Uh, more collectibles, more stories, more NFT stuff, more goats. And uh, thanks for being on Star Talk Live. Good night. <laughs>